Hi, welcome to the ninth lecture on compactness. Today we will be mainly concerned with compact spaces, and most often we will assume they are also Hausdorff spaces. Therefore, we will be dealing with compact Hausdorff spaces. There are a lot of interesting results in this direction, and which are somewhat subtle and more useful. And this kind of thinking, you will see that it will be very useful if you go for higher mathematics. Okay, that's why I decided to include, usually I include in my courses and also in my book and here too. Okay, let us get started. Yeah, I forgot to say that. Yeah, Merry Christmas to all of you. Right. So, title is here, my email ID, and my YouTube channel. And here you can see there's a spelling mistake. Good. <laughs> right? Very good. Let's get started. So, let us recall what we proved was something very a uh, result if x tau is Hausdorff and k is x compact then k is closed. This is a very important result. Okay, this is already done. Right? So, most of the things what we are going to do in some fashion or other it will be using this result okay yesterday we had already seen one for example if x tau is compact and is Hausdorff and a and b are closed then a intersection b is sorry a compact <coughs> then a intersection is compact this is one of the applications we saw right since A is compact, it's closed. B is compact, it's closed. Therefore, intersection B is closed set, but it's a closed subset of a compact set A. Therefore, it's again compact. That's the way we proved, right? I'm just quickly recalling. See, this is how I learn. Whenever I do something, try to go through small, small things so that you become very comfortable. There is no need for you to remember. Okay. For example, how do you think you remember your multiplication tables when you are second and third standard? You memorize them, but after repeatedly using them okay without quoting the entire multiplication table you know the answers so it's the same thing with modern mathematics abstract mathematics also small small things you keep on revising therefore it becomes natural for you to think them okay so the first theorem we want to prove this is a very very useful theorem but uh, unfortunately many textbooks do not say that suppose x tau is a com compact space and O is a Hausdorff space. Okay. And let f from x to y be a continuous bijection. Okay. Then f is a homeomorphism. Notice that we had already seen one example 0 to 2 pi to s1 in r to the unit circle. Okay, the map the theta going to cos theta sin theta. This is a continuous bijection, but it's not a homeomorphism. So, wh what fails here? This is not compact, but this is Hausdorff, no problem. Yeah, so this is very crucial. So and again at that time I also said something about isomorphism in general okay so it's a very natural question one always ask in mathematics when I have a bijective homomorphism from x to y when I say homomorphism as I explained in the earlier lecture it depends on the context if x and y are linear maps it's a linear map bijective linear map if they are groups then bijective group homomorphism if they are ring ring module module if they are topological spaces, then continuous bijection. These are the homomorphisms for me. The natural question you ask is when it is a 
an isomorphism that means f inverse from o to x is also a homomorphism of the kind we have discussed this is a very natural question in general except in algebra nowhere else it happens what does it doesn't happen i have a continuum sorry i have a bijective homomorphism from x to y x and y having the same kind of structure but f inverse from y to x may not be a homomorphism okay but in algebra it always happens okay but you will see a lot of such examples okay for example you will see you know, suppose f is a u is a subset in rn to rn v is also open set and suppose this is a diff differential map okay and f of u equal to v and it's a it's a bijection also right therefore i have a map f inverse from v to u so i want to know that is differentiable okay so this is so between open sets my homomorphism is going to be a differential map of this open set onto that open set let us say then i if it is a bijective homomorphism i want the inverse inverse is going to be from v to v v is an open set u is an open set i want to know that it's differentiable it may not be true yeah for example f from r to r f of x equal to x cubed okay this is a whole differentiable bijection but f inverse is not a differentiable map at all at for example it fails to be differentiable at zero see that's why i said it's going to be subtle okay i don't teach only topology i teach mathematics okay and a similar thing you would have seen if you are learning functional analysis if x and y are non-linear spaces and if t from x to y is a continuous linear map which is also a bijection then i can ask whether t inverse from o to x this will be linear map notice that algebra is doesn't fail you <laughs> okay t inverse will be a linear map it will be a bijection also but whether it's continuous that's not true that is why you call inverse mapping theorem and this is also essential inverse mapping theorem from calculus and even in complex analysis you have such a thing okay if u is an open set and f from u to v again an open set okay let us this is let us assume this is holomorphic plus bijection right i want to know the f inverse from u to u is holomorphic but if you don't know the word holomorphic it's analytic okay so this also follows from your open mapping theorem from complex analysis and this is i call inverse mapping theorem but it is okay it's a, what they call is bounded inverse theorem in functional analysis okay and it's a corollary of so called open mapping theorem and you will see in all these things the the corresponding map is an open map is the most important thing okay this is a subtle thing okay this do not worry if you don't understand any of these things okay just for fast forward but if you think you had understood something please revise it okay in all the three results okay the yep is open map is is the most important step you will not find such things in any book teachers also may not tell you that is why i say i'm going to be a little subtle okay but you will thank me if you are going for higher studies you will really thank me you find mathematics is a, a single unit okay it's not compartmentalized okay there is a topology there is several variable calculus there is complex analysis there is functional analysis all are united okay come back so after this self talk let us do that so what do i have x to is x is compact and we is house door 
and f from x to y a continuous bijection so i want to know that f is a homeomorphism okay so remember when when do i say a map f is a homo, homo, homeomorphism f must be continuous f must be bijective f inverse also must be continuous but we have seen equivalent things what have you seen a bijective continuous map is a homeomorphism if it is an open map and a bijective ho continuous map is a homeomorphism it's a closed map okay these are the three equivalent conditions right for a bijective you let f from x to y for a bijective continuous map then the following are equivalent you have followed my all earlier lectures on continuity you know so what does it say one is f inverse from y to x is continuous and f, f is open map and 3 f is closed map okay so now i want to prove f is a homomorphism for this theorem so what do you think which equivalent condition i will use equivalent definition i will use this is how you learn to think yes so we want to prove okay back to our proof enough to show f is a closed map right therefore f from x to y compact this is house door and this is continuous bijection so i want to say it's a closed map so let us take k to be closed now what do i know about x x is compact k is a closed subset of that therefore what do you know i know k is compact right now you know f is a continuous function right therefore what do i know about f f of k is compact in y but remember what is y y is hausdorff so this is a compact set in a hausdorff space therefore what do i know about f of k f of k is closed right so what did i start with i start started with a closed subset k of x then i showed f of k is closed therefore f is a continuous bijection which is also a closed map therefore f is a homeomorphism so now do you see that if you didn't want to learn any of those things what i said earlier this proof is very simple right what is the theorem f is a continuous bijection from x to y x is compact and y is hausdorff then what do i want to show f is a homeomorphism therefore what do you know about y as a corollary y is f of x therefore y is also compact and since a homeomorphism what can i conclude about x now x should be hausdorff also even though i did not originally assume that do you follow that okay so try to learn to think like this okay so observe okay y equal to fx therefore y is compact which was not given originally now now f is a homeomorphism from x to y and therefore f inverse from y to x is a homeomorphism and thus this i know is hausdorff therefore it follows x is hausdorff again this is not given earlier you understand that okay so pause review proceed so i hope you are amazed at the simplicity of that argument and the and what immediate corollaries of that okay 
right it is a very very powerful result and if you i put try to put this result in perspective by comparing with the analogous results in other disciplines yeah i hope you like it think about we'll go further in the last thing we proved if you have is a continuous bijection from a compact space to a hausdorff space y then it is a homeomorphism from that we deduce something extra to start with x was compact and y was hausdorff now we concluded x is compact as well as hausdorff y is hausdorff as well as compact that means both are compact and hausdorff right this argument produces something very interesting there is some kind of min max principle that is given a set x and if you have a topology tau which is compact as well as hausdorff that is x ka tau becomes compact hausdorff space in some sense tau is maximal with respect to compactness and tau is minimal with respect to that compactness uh, hausdorffness okay don't get tangled entangled with maximal minimal i will explain in very simple plain terms okay and this argument is again very easy but to subtle and if you ask for to go for research etc this kind of argument you should become more confident thorough with okay so you go through this argument and revise it at least twice more okay so let us get started so oh, i have to change into tablet right yeah so let us assume x tau and this is compact and hausdorff right now suppose tau 2 is finer than tau and still x tau 2 is compact okay let b such that x tau 2 is compact then i claim tau 2 is tau that is in some sense that's why it's maximum yeah the proof is easy okay it's exactly same argument we did now let's look at x tau 2 to x tau since tau 2 is finer than tau okay this map is continuous and since identity map as a set theoretic map it's a bijection right and we are assuming x tau 2 is compact therefore this is compact this was already given to be hausdorff therefore what do i know therefore i understand identity is a homeomorphism right hence the topology tau 2 and tau are the same okay please pause review proceed this is a subtle argument it looks very cheap okay very simple but many times i have seen people getting confused with the argument that's why i break it into small pieces now let's look at next the counterpart suppose tau 1 is a topology which is coarser than tau but x tau 1 is hausdorff okay then i claim tau 1 equal to tau okay in some sense that's a minimum nothing can be less than that can be okay yeah right notice that since the tau 1 is less than equal to tau x tau 1 is compact yeah okay but that doesn't matter to us so the way i prove it again same thing now what should be the domain i want the identity map therefore the domain should be with the finer topology therefore tau x tau 1 right so this is again a continuous bijection and this is given to be compact this is given to be hausdorff because okay if tau is hausdorff topology if tau 1 is less than angular tau it need not be hausdorff topology assumes hausdorff topology but we already know it's also compact therefore we are going to claim they are the same right therefore the identity is a homeomorphism this implies tau equal to tau 1 so go through it mentally twice or thrice okay 
watch it the put this part of the video again if tau 2 is finer than tau tau is a compact topology therefore tau 2 may not be compact topology but it's a Hausdorff topology because tau is Hausdorff you understand right then what we finally prove is tau 2 must be tau on the other hand if tau 1 is coarser than tau tau is Hausdorff topology therefore tau 1 need not be Hausdorff topology but tau is compact therefore I, I know tau 1 is compact okay but now we are going to prove that tau 1 equal to tau even though it's coarser see this is the maximal minimal principle nothing less than tau could be Hausdorff and nothing more than tau can be Hausdorff if tau is both Hausdorff and compact okay please watch it I'm sure many of the beginners will get confused but go twice or thrice okay review at least twice and think about on your own just don't keep watching my video okay think on your own right okay now let us go to few more results yeah this is again a thing which is never done uh, let us see essentially suppose I have a map from x to y x and y are topological spaces and do you remember what is meant by graph of f graph of f by definition set of all x comma fx and x in x okay and if you watch my continuity and homeomorphism i had already proved the map x going to x comma fx okay from capital x to graph of f as a subset of x plus y this is a homeomorphism call this phi this is a homeomorphism assuming oh sorry this is a bijection and if this is continuous this is a homeomorphism okay the way we proved that was let us look at the map phi as a map from x to x cross y you see that i am going to use subspace topology as well as product topology here what happens x going to x comma fx okay now this takes place okay the image of phi is nothing other than graph of f right and graph of f is given the subspace topology so this phi I can think of a map from x to graph of f now when this is continuous we had already seen in subspace topology in fact when I in the universal mapping property as well as in the connected lectures etc connectedness lectures I would do in that okay this map is continuous if and only if if I can think of it as a map from x to x cross y is continuous but the but this map into product space continues if you only leave the component maps therefore what is phi 1 of x it is x what is phi 2 of x that is fx they are continuous right so this is given to be this identity map therefore continuous this is given to be continuous therefore this map is continuous right therefore the map phi from x to graph of f is a continuous and it's a bijection why it's a bijection phi of x1 equal to phi of x2 if and only if x1 fx1 equal to x2 fx2 notice that x1 and x2 may be different but fx1 may be equal to fx2 but as added pair if they are equal this implies x1 equal to x2 you follow therefore the this is a one one map it's of course a bijection because any element in the graph is of the form x comma fx yeah i claim this is a homeomorphism why it's a homeomorphism so wh what is phi inverse from graph of f to x any element here of the form fx and this is fx is in y therefore what is the obvious thing this is the map okay 
now is phi inverse continuous how do i do that remember that again we are using surface topology so look at the map phi x the projection map x cross y to x phi x of x comma y equal to x this is continuous by product topology right and phi inverse is nothing other than pi x restricted to the graph and remember whenever I restrict a continuous function to a sus subset with a su and with a subspace topology it is continuous we had already seen in subspaces so these are the subtle arguments as I said today there are a lot of subtle arguments which are usually not done okay what are the facts I used about subspace topology if f from x to y continuous and b is a subset of y if f of x equal to b then i can think of x as a map from b and this is the subspace topology okay this map is continuous right and second thing is if f from x to y continuous if a is a subset of x restrict f to a from u to x and this is with subspace topology to you this is this is y this continuous restriction of any continuous map is continuous these are the two important facts of a subspace topology i had already explained in my subspace topology so i am using again and again okay so let's come back so the map y from x to graph of f x going to x comma fx is a homeomorphism Is that clear? Now I want to prove a theorem. So pause, review, proceed. If you had gone through my lectures on subspace topology or on continuous functions, all these things would have been done. Okay. Please go through it. I'll take a break and start applying this result to prove another interesting result. So the next result we want to prove is what I call closed graph theorem. If you are doing functional analysis, you will know there is a similar theorem there. So what here we want to say is f is a function from x to y and look at the graph of that. It's a subset of x cross y. X cross y is has a subspace topology. So assume the graph of f as a subset of x cross y with product topology is com is closed then I want to claim f is continuous in functional analysis you have something similar if you have two Banach spaces x and y t is a linear map from x to y okay just a linear map and suppose the graph of f is continuous sorry graph of f graph of t is a closed subset of x cross y okay the product norm then the linear map t from x to y is continuous so exactly similar that's why i call this a closed graph theorem yeah now how do i prove that okay again thing i want to say x cross okay maybe it will be easier if i write it in a tablet so this is the theorem i want to prove so f is from x to y these are spaces Topological spaces, but yep, not assumed to be continuous. Okay, but let us look at the graph of f. This is a subset of x cross y, and this is a closed set. Then from that, I want to conclude f is continuous. Okay, as a preparation of the result only, I have done whatever i did earlier okay so notice that i have a bijection and my map x to graph of f this is a bijection right and we already learned something what are the things we learned and this is a bijection and a continuous bijection is a homeomorphism provided the domain must be compact and the codomain must be 
Hausdorff. Yeah? Do you understand that? So I want to make use of that result. Okay? Right. So what are the assumptions I should make of X and Y? What should be the assumptions? First clear, I want X, Y one to be compact because I have X cross Y and graph of yeah this is a closed subset and this is com compact by product space product of compact space is compact therefore this is compact therefore this becomes compact right now I have the map y inverse from graph of f to x this is x fx going to x yeah so this is again a bijection right so remember what do i want a continuous bijection i want it to be a homeomorphism so for that i need the domain to be combat co-domain to be hausdorff so this i know is compact therefore i want x to be hausdorff okay i'm just trying to kind of think through rather than stating a theorem okay why the hypers are made so so what is our assumption now x and y x is compact plus hausdorff and y is compact okay and f is a map from x to y so that graph of f is compact subset okay so this is the proposition i want to prove then f is continuous I justified why I have to assume X and Y to be uh, compact first because graph of F is going to be a subset of X cross Y. So if X and Y are compact, then X graph being a closed subset will be compact. Next, I looked at the map, okay, graph, graph to X. That's the first projection of the first factor map. Okay, so I want it to be homeomorphism. For that, I need y to X to be Hausdorff. You understand? Forget all those things. If you don't like any of those things, this is the theorem result the proof is very simple okay so how am i going to prove that let us look at proof consider the map from okay let's first observe first gr of f being a closed subset Of your compact space is compact right now let's look at the map y inverse from graph of f to x this map is x comma fx going to x so if y inverse as we know is nothing other than projection out of the first factor and this we know is continuous okay pi x from x cross y to x is continuous okay that's a definition of product topology actually yeah therefore it's a restriction to graph okay x is continuous do all of you agree right and we had already seen this is nothing other than phi inverse therefore phi inverse is a continuous bijection From where? From a compact space to half door space. Good. Therefore, phi inverse is a homeomorphism. Right? So, Paul, review, proceed. This is very easy. Right? Since phi inverse is a homeomorphism, phi is a homeomorphism. What is phi? Phi is the map x to graph of f. The map x going to x comma fx okay this is a homeomorphism right therefore in particular phi is continuous this implies its components are continuous 
what are its components phi 1 of x is x we had already seen it phi 2 of x is fx since phi is continuous therefore phi 1 is continuous phi 2 is continuous in part that means fx is continuous okay that's it so go through the proof you will see all the results are very pretty and in samson they are subtle the arguments are very simple but okay many times you may miss the argument it's so simple you may miss it so that's why i said first watch the video and stop it pause it try to go through the proof in your mind if you get stuck again watch it do at least twice like this okay you will be very sure of these results and you know how to use compactness house darkness homeomorphism all these kinds of objects product topology surface topology okay it's fun i hope you enjoy it we will meet again.